Hi there, Susan. How are you? Good. How are you? All right. I'm um I'm feeling it. I'm I'm all sorts of positive attitude for the Celtics. We're we're oh, gonna you go, are. are you? Yeah. We're gonna get a four game sweep. Here we go. That's right. That's right. I That's believe at this point. Oh no, we're not gonna get that. We're not getting. <laughs> I actually, I actually hope it's over tonight. <laughs> Just because they have such bad attitudes. Oh, there you go. Right. Oh, there, there, there. Just right. awful. They don't deserve it right now. That is true. That's my thought. <laughs> yeah. I usually have a strong thought. <laughs> to a fault. Um, that is all for the good. Strong thoughts. Uh, hockey. I'm interested more in the hockey, actually. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, I did make a delivery. I put it in your mailbox. I saw that the uh, this the sign and um, the yeah eight Albion Street and uh, five Lantern Avenue. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I got those this morning. Yeah. Wow, great! Hi there, Matt. How are you? Good. How are you doing, guys? All right. Sorry, uh, Susan. Sorry, I left stuff in your mailbox. Uh, yep, we found it. Thank you. Good stuff. Yeah. What a um an impressive town meeting. Um, 19, uh, 19 Warren articles in, in what, th three hours, two hours, two and a half. Um, yeah. I can't really comment because I wasn't there, but it was a sad showing. Were there 60 people there? 60 committed people. B 60 committed. Yeah. Bo uh, Bill Spaulding texted me and said that he's run about 10 minutes late. Okay. All right. Gotcha. Thanks. Um, all right. Well, it's nice to see you, Jim. It's nice to see you, Kevin. Um, yeah. All right. Well, um, We've got a quorum. Um, Aaron will not be joining us tonight. She also sent a message that uh, um, she'll make it to the the next meeting. So let's uh, let's call ourselves to order. Um, a quick roll call vote. Um, Matt Lowry. Here. Kevin York. Here. Jim Hogan. Here. And myself, Theo Noll. Here. So um, we've got a quorum. Um, and uh, so the minutes from May 9th have been circulated and has uh, does anybody um, have any edits or comments to them? No, I would agree. All right, um, is there a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve the right. May 9th, 2023 minutes as presented. All right, thank you. All right. Any, a second? Second. Second. All right, all right. All right. We're going to put Kevin down as uh, getting him uh, on the record. And uh, all in favor, uh, Matt Lowry? Yes. Kevin? You, Kevin? Yes. All uh, right, Jim? Yes. And myself, yes. All right. Okay. Um, the, um, uh, so the, ne um, the next item, um, we can... I don't want to rush things uh, through, um, but we can catch Bill up when he comes in um, or or uh, separately as, uh, after the meeting. Um, the, uh, the third item on our agenda is the MBTA communities uh, uh, update. So. so we had a, I would say, uh, successful meeting 
of the MBTA working group uh, last Tuesday. At that working group, we discussed uh, the refinements associated with the zoning area that would be needed for compliance with the state. At the time, based on analysis that was conducted by our uh, zoning consultant, as well mm -hmm. as Aaron and the maps, they determined that the inclusion of the green, the working group would be interested in a zone around Wakefield Junction and a zone around Greenwood appears mm -hmm. from a compliance models perspective the unless we were going to significantly uh, densify or allow greater density than what would was originally envisioned by the working group, the yeah. Greenwood zoning is would not be helpful from a okay. compliance model perspective. Without getting into the weeds, the lots around Greenwood are significantly bigger and it impacts some of the minimum densities. So the working group is looking around, looking at a uh, zoning area that around Wakefield Junction. That would be for the purposes of compliance with the MBTA state requirements solely. In addition, the working group identified and discussed high level um, that there may be other locations uh, within the town that we're interested in looking at in terms of from a good policy perspective, not for a state compliance uh, perspective, that there may be interest in expanding the number of locations that are under evaluation. So right now, the, the next step is that Aaron and our consultant are going to go back, refine some of the maps that would be needed for compliance with the state. And then mm -hmm. the working group is going to evaluate and discuss other options for, you know, kind of compliance plus zoning that would be passed all at once. The other thing to put on people's radar is we're going to start looking at what the actual drafting of the bylaw is going to look like. I anticipate that's a conversation that's going to kick off in earnest at the next working group model. But more to come. Um, we still feel very confident that the timeline discussed regarding getting a draft bylaw out kind of late summer is still feeling like it's pretty attainable from based on the progress that we've been seeing to date. I think all the conversations are very productive. I would also note for anyone in the meeting today or anyone may, who may be listening at a later date, there is on the planning board website a web page with the relevant information in terms of the mbta community the whole effort to date with a bunch of the relevant presentations as well as information of the working group as they're moving forward so if you want to follow along you can find uh, meetings that have been posted on the, on that website as well as relevant minutes and presentations and reference materials nice yeah um uh yeah um hats hats off to you and jen mcdonald um at town hall for um keeping that that up to updated and uh really useful so so it's a really good resource can um would you mind talking a little bit about um so is it no no district around greenwood um or so so, so yeah, if we just take a step back, what we need to do is we need to produce a map that will be that would that meets certain number of requirements that, as laid out by the state. We believe we can develop a map that can be in compliance with the state on the basis of a zone around Wakefield Junction by itself. Okay. That being said, we we the members of the working group have identified the thought that as a pub, matter of public policy, and if we're introducing a, a multifamily overlay district regardless of if it's for compliance or not there are other areas greenwood being the most prominent that it would make sense from a policy perspective to have some similar zoning passed concurrent with the the zoning for compliance with the state so you'd end up passing one district potentially that would be a little bit bigger than what you need in order to comply with the state and then you'd only take the section around wakefield junction and submit that to the state for their review and approval. Yeah, got it. Okay. Um, no, that um, sounds sounds really thoughtful, and I didn't uh, I didn't consider the you know so, some of the you know the barriers to uh, creating a district around Greenwood. So that's that's useful, and that that's obviously going to be part of the public discussion process about. And I think the advantage of that is that it frees us from some of the constraints associated with the law. If this, mm. the area around Greenwood, for example, 
is not does not need to comply with the particularities of mm -hmm. the MBTA law because we're complying via the Wakefield Junction area. So yeah. it allows us a little more flexibility to be to be a little more thoughtful in terms of how we shape that that zoning. Yeah. And, and obviously, you know, Matt, if, if you think I'm mischaracterizing anything, you know, I'm more than happy to have you correct me on any of the things I just said. No, that's that's pretty accurate. Um, I know one thing we're doing is uh, the area um, around Wakefield Station, we're making it actually, we're, we're purposely making it a little bit larger than it needs to be. Um, just because we know when we get into discussions with people, there's, there's going to be certain areas that will be taken out potentially because of proximity, walking distance, sidewalks, things like that. Um, we kind of expanded the area to include more of the downtown area to get the density, not only to the transit, but also to the business district. So, You'll see an area that is actually larger than it needs to be. That's by design at this point in order to um, basically to engage more people and, and to be able to pare it down uh, with people's input. So we don't want to have something that's pigeonholed that we say you need to accept this and that's it. We've got no yes. options. So. Mm -hmm. And then the the equitable equitable factor of including Greenwood, we still believe that that um, should be should be on the table because we don't want this all hoisted on one section. We want to make sure that everyone's really right. Doing some of the benefits, let's say. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, good. Um, and well, the yeah, the one of. Oh, I was gonna say the one other thing in closing that I just want to put on people's radar, and I think some members of the, of the planning board have, have, have started to think about this, but you know, soft target August 1st is when we were talking about potential trying to get some sort of draft. As I said, that's not a hard and fast rule for the working group. Yeah. Um, what happens after we get that draft bylaw between then and you know, right now we had targeted where we had talked about targeting the spring town meeting. So mm -hmm. um just to put on people's radar, I'm, I've started to kind of work out at least the first pass of what that process could look like. I'm going to be trying to reach out to um, CO just to make sure I'm, you know, making sure we're planning, you know, respecting the planning of the, of the planning board in terms of how our meeting cadence is going to go and engaging with uh, Aaron to make sure that town staff can be supportive. And then I'm looking to start a conversation as soon as the next working group in terms of what that post post working group draft looks like yeah. and then oh, I, my intent would be to push it to the rest of the planning board and solicit feedback in terms of how we build a process such that we can make sure that it's an open and transparent process where we allow members of the public to provide feedback such that if there is a reason to matt's earlier point to make revisions add subtract move things around we want to try to make sure that we're building enough uh, wiggle room such that we can solicit said feedback and then execute it before we hit send something fully baked to town meeting. So um, that's something that not that, that we need to talk, take action on as a board right now, but something that I'm working on trying to figure out like what makes sense logistically. And then I anticipate this be sending it in the near term to this to members of this group for, for input as it relates to that's a process that makes sense. Yeah. Um, that's great, and that, um, yeah, it'd be really uh, helpful to think about uh, the process and the calendar, and and about um, yeah, what is the most effective way of engaging folks and the the timing, so that yeah, so that it's successful. Um, well, that's that's helpful, and um, yeah, and we certainly want to do that because we know. Concurrently, the bylaw review is going to going to be uh, unfolding. Um, although we do have a, a little more information about uh, about that, the timing of that is going to be more extended. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, any other sort of questions or comments, Kevin? Um, 
Um, do you have any? I don't think so. It was pretty, okay. pretty good overview, informative. Yeah. Okay. Um, agreed. Um, so that's uh, that's really helpful. So, and again, um, Jim, thanks for the the website and uh, keeping all of this uh, sort of current and in the public public eye. So, all right. Um, our fourth item is the zoning bylaw review committee update. Um, and so the, um, all right. And we've got Bill Spaulding. All right. Hey there, Bill. Um, 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 we've, uh, we're opening up item four, the zoning bylaw review committee. Um, but, uh, but before, we, um, before we do that, Jim, do you want to give, uh, a quick 30 second rundown on MBTA? Um, sure, Bill. So what we just discussed about was we had a meeting high level. We're going to look at a compliance zone around Wakefield junction that would be able to be compliant with the MBTA requirements from the state on it by itself. And the reason being is that it for reasons associated with geometry of lots and such, Greenwood isn't isn't helpful for a compliance model. However, we're also looking at from a equity standpoint in terms of where we're citing this overlay district. We're looking at including portions of the town in the MBTA overlay district, which would then not go to the state for compliance. So it'd be the minimum for the state plus some extra things. We're anticipating that we're we're still thinking that late summer is is a deliverable for a draft bylaw. And then after that, in the near term, in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be looking for um, to coordinate with Theo and Aaron and then working group planning board in terms of from summer till springtown meeting. What does that process look like? Solicit feedback and provide an ability to adjust as required in order to make sure that we're having a process that is open, transparent, fair, but also has the ability to, to adjust to folks while also, you know, frankly hitting the date for a town meeting for the springtime. Thanks for the recap, Jim. Yeah, uh, yeah, that, that sounds like a good plan, especially Wakefield Junction, as we know with Nahant. I don't know if you tuned into the town council meeting or if you guys discussed the uh, 40B at Nahant, but that's something that uh, looking at the junction and how far that spreads out, how far down Nahant, what, how selective it is would be interesting to see compared to like the pad site at Mike's gym and our MG fitness and other places around that could handle it. But um, yeah, thanks. Thanks for the quick update. Glad to be here. All right. You made it as we are too. So yeah. Excellent. Um, so we were going to move to our fourth agenda item, which is the zoning bylaw review committee update. Um, uh, uh, I'll start and Jim, you can fill in and, and others as well. And oh, well, um, uh, Kevin, do you do you want to start? Is there anything from your side? Um, we haven't had another meeting since the previous one. So no real updates on mine that I've heard of. Okay. All right. um, yeah, so still, still on track for um, the next meetings would be June 5th and um, uh, and then September 18th, right? Um, the, and so, um, so we will um, more than likely uh, the week before June 5th, we'll get uh, another set of draft memos from Attorney Bobrowski, um, and then come come to the bylaw review committee meeting uh, to discuss. Um, I think we've had. Um, uh, within this board um, and um, in other other places, um, some conversations about the effectiveness of the process and uh, uh, how how Dan Lieber and the the bylaw review committee um, are working with the consultant and um, how they will they will bring draft language. Uh, to the planning board and others in town uh, for review and comment. And um, so my understanding and, and Kevin and Jim uh, uh, 
correct me if, if I'm sort of misstating it. Um, what we're getting right now from the attorney is sort of concept language helping to highlight uh, specific uh, themes or topics related to the overall uh, writing of the bylaw um, so that uh, hearing our feedback will uh, help give some, uh, uh, I think, some guidance to Attorney Bobrowski on how to write the entire thing. Um, and so the the sections we received uh, at the last meeting, sections one, five, and 10, um, are not necessarily fully meant to be uh, the, the first draft of those sections. Um, there's going to be additional uh, work, additional sections that from other parts of the bylaw that may get merged into those. And so we, we may see substantively different uh, formal drafts uh, of those sections when, when they come. Um, and, um, and then, so the, the timing process is uh, still unknown, but I think um, headed with the goal of spring 2025 town, uh, town warrant, town, town meeting um, to review. So that would, uh, we would work with the, uh, all the parties to um, fill out the calendar for next year um, um, uh, as, as, that, as that unfolds. Um, and, you know, the, yeah, it's still- yeah. Do, you, do you mind if I step in for a second? Yeah, that'd be helpful, sure. So I think right now, Attorney Bombrowski, in terms of his process, he's, we've already done two of his four, what he's calling theme meetings. And so the, the balance of the meetings at the June 5th and the September 18th meeting will be the conclusion of his theme meetings where he's taking specific sections, asking for high level feedback with that initial draft. From a process perspective, after the theme meetings, that's when Attorney Bombrowski is anticipating on issuing his first draft of the entirety of the bylaw in one go. My understanding of the way it was explained to me by uh, Chairperson Leeper was that at, do, at that time, Attorney Bombrowski would identify the, as he called it at the last meeting, the sushi menu of options from, that need to be made by the town from a series of public policy perspectives. One of the, the mechanisms that Dan strongly advocated for was engagement in the theme meetings, which I think this board has been well represented at. In addition, written but not formalized comment you know, whether that be red lines or other written comment that could be utilized to by coll be collated by Attorney Bobrowski to help identify all the different sections within those bylaws that need to have policy choices decided. <clears throat> From my understanding, you know, after that, after the that first bylaw has been writ, you know, issued. Again, the opportunity for written comment is the preferred method of feedback by the bylaw review committee, but it still has not been defined. And I think the bylaw review committee indicated a willingness to engage in terms of how do they define that decision-making process. Um, it still hasn't been clear to me in terms of you know what that that looks like. There was a, a, a email thread that was started between the chairperson chair, chairman of planning board, ZBA, and bylaw review committee in order to kind of set something up to define what that process is going to be, um, you know, after that, you know, going, how do you go from revision one to revision two? That's the part that still is unclear. But I think from this board's perspective, the feedback we're getting is written comment to the bylaw review committee, not in a formalized letter that, you know, goes, you know, but it's more informal is the preferred method. And then the, that, revision of the bylaw number one we could probably expect sometime in q3 maybe early q4 of 23 and then that process from there hasn't really been defined chairperson lieber did indicate a willingness and frankly um uh you know he advocated you know basically that if we have com comments or questions regarding the the process to bring it to the next theme meeting 
which I do intend to do and ask, you know, I understand what is being described, you know, how we get to revision one, but from revision one to revision two, what does that process look like? And so we, I did respond to the chair asking and laying out kind of our understanding of the basic process so he could give it to attorney Bobrowski in advance so we could have a productive conversation. So we'll see what ends up happening and hopefully it, it ends up where we can all end up where we you know, are working efficiently and hopefully with each other as our board, the bylaw review committee and all the other relevant boards and committees. Yeah, that's that that's really helpful. And um, it is hard. I, I'm very sympathetic uh, to the, the process and how, how to have an inclusive uh, discussion with such a large document and so many different stakeholders. Um, you know, Aaron has brought up the the importance of making sure um, all the various uh, boards and committees in town are able to participate and also um, the various departments um, who have to administer a lot of this and who also will have uh, really constructive feedback to give um, to it. So um, yeah, there's a, uh, a lot to do to so be able to uh, uh, identify, receive the feedback and collate it. Um, I don't know, um, questions from Matt, Bill, um, Kevin, like um, just in terms of how, how you're understanding the process or your questions about it and the, the ultimate uh, decision-making. That's pretty much how I've understood it as well yeah. from the review committee side. The ultimate decision making based on non zoning bylaws that we've reviewed in the past has generally been to get input from those other groups, um, whether it's conservation committee, police department, fire department, et cetera, um, and then use that input to basically write the, the bylaw in a uh, legally proper way. So I, I think the based on what I've seen with past bylaws that we've worked on, the, the final say is with the bylaw review committee, but in a way that tries to that basically go in the direction that the I'll call them subject matter experts recommend. Okay. Now, if there's if there's um, if there are differences between planning board and ZBA, for example, I don't know how we would sort those out. Um, if I could just add to, uh, yeah. you know, appreciate the time that we're putting into this and willing to put more time to really straighten these out, um, looking for consistency, um, thinking about how, as things come in piece by piece, how they're all tied back and really pushing that towards the on the shoulders of the bylaw review committee to making sure that's happening. And um, I, we've already talked about concerns and different things. And I, yeah, I guess my biggest concern is consistency. And <clears throat> as we know with our board and the ZBA, we need to work with these bylaws uh, moving yeah. forward. So I think the better coordinated they are and the easier our job will be and we'll be able to give the right message or at least point people towards like we get a lot of questions and it's just so we'll hear look at this section read through this and it just makes more sense I think um, to educate our board as well when we're preparing when I'm preparing for a meeting after we get our you know files to look at and whatever I think it's um, I think it's crucial so I'm glad we're part of it um, I'm still a little fuzzy and gray about like how much our part is. And so my biggest, biggest concern is that we do receive the completed bylaw revisions at some point in a year or whatever and a half. And we have short time to hold public hearings before town meeting. So if I would love at some point, um, and maybe it's after um, Grabowski is done 
but maybe we look backwards from the timeline and say, okay, well, if this is the town meeting we're shooting for, um, is it the whole bylaw that we're looking to go? Or are we going to take it section by section? I think our board needs to govern that in a way because the hearings will be with us. Do we hold a series of hearings and make sure we have time that it goes section by section? So the sections that we need to spend more time on, we can. And the other sections that aren't so much, we don't have to worry about. So I just want us as a board to not miss the opportunity to work backwards from when town meeting will happen and make sure we have, I don't know, do we need four months minimum, I would say, before a town meeting? I don't know, Matt, if that's um, sounds like the right amount of time to give us time to review and hold the public hearings. should be plenty of time because there's going to be public input way before this. So what comes to us initially should be well vetted. And if it isn't, then we'll see the process, how the process plays out. And if, again, if we're not on board with this, or there's some issues with it, it would be foolish for the bylaw review committee to you know, bring up a town meeting. If the planning board's not going to support it, or as questions are when people get up and ask us at town meeting, it's going to be doomed right from there. So it 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 needs to be well vetted before it even gets to us. Because once it gets to us, it's it's in its pretty final form. Mm -hmm. We we hold public hearings on what is submitted, remember, to town meeting. So um this has to be well, well thought out, well before this. And I do want to be clear. I think that all indications seem to be as if, you know, Attorney Bobrowski's been down this road before. Seems yeah. like Chairperson Lieber is very conscious in terms of trying to solicit feedback. I think the more that I discuss the process with him, the more I be there. The bylaw review committee's intent is to have the entirety of the bylaw in basically a single up or down vote. You know, I think from our board's perspective, you know, if that's the way that they're angling, we should, you know, if we're supportive of that approach, you know, I think that it's going to be a lot more beneficial for us to have some level of, you know, even if it's not a formal engagement, but, you know, members of this board attending these meetings, providing feedback, because I think trying to, to go back and, and rebake the cake after they go through their process is going to be an exercise in pain. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that it's just going to be incumbent upon us to be engaged in the process. And that's why I think that, you know, understanding what happens after these theme meetings that conclude in September is important. But, um, you know, I don't think we can really do anything else except for just continue to ask the questions I think a lot of the members of this board have continued to ask. Right. Um, I'm. I'm sort of uh, hearing that uh, we might want to have uh, some agenda items, sort of us responding to the theme, the theme meetings that that have been had, um, and that that would be another way to um, collate our questions or comments or our language, and then we'd be able to submit that uh, as you know additional follow up from uh, from from these meetings. Um, I think that it, it's likely that someone from this board probably should be, you know, redlining or going through some of these things. I, you know, maybe it's different members of this board do it separately and just, you know, basically identify all the issues. It sounds like the first pass, you know, with this rev one is supposed to be, you know, highly annotated with, you know, language. I've received feedback that this is in question, this is in question, this is in question. That's the way it was explained to me. So, you know, my intent at some point was to, if I ever get enough time to sit down and actually send, you know, written written copy of some of the things that we discussed last meeting, just to make sure that some of the things that I saw that I seemed concerning to me got addressed. I don't know if that makes sense for us to do that as formally as a board, or if it makes sense for people to, you know, send whatever comments that they have to the bylaw review committee on an independent case-by-case -case basis. 
that's that was the way that they indicated they preferred it and as opposed to like a formalized letter from the planning board so i think it's kind of depending on whatever other people's you know how how much you um feel like there's specific items that you want to highlight at this time Yeah, what um what are folks reactions to that um well if, if it's going to come from the planning board it has to be consensus by all of us I mean, we're going to have to you know spend a lot of our time in meetings discussing this to come up with a consensus if it's going to be you know three people feel strongly that it should be a certain way um then we each need to send a letter and you know, the file our review committee needs to weigh the evidence they get is how they write it up. So, mm -hmm. but just because the planning board might be pushing for one thing, that doesn't mean the file our review committee necessarily wants it. So does that mean we're not going to support it in the end? You know, we have to weigh the, if we're coming at this as a board, which again, we all need to be in agreement if we're coming out of the board or if we're coming at it as individuals. Mm -hmm. So um, I can understand why the bylaw review committee might not want each board, you know, choosing sides on certain issues because, um, you know, one of your kids is going to get left out cold. So, uh, and I'm sure they don't want to get into that right. where right. they're alienating a whole group of people for a few issues. I strongly agree with Matt. I think that we need to figure out how we want to approach it as a board right now. And in terms of at least until we get to the, the first revision, right? After they have the first revision, if there's a formal mechanism that they're going to hold meetings or whatnot and talk about these issues and make choices, but they're not even at that point yet. And so I would strongly advocate that for now, just highlighting the issues that you think that need to be discussed and you know, not just copy paste from, from the last rezoning effort. I think that effort is something that I don't think necessarily triggers or warrants the attention from our board as a board. But if we have individual contributors who say, you know, this specific thing I think need, you know, needs further review and thought as opposed to just whatever was, you know, whatever's written on the page right now. I think that probably would be sufficient. And then once we have the full bylaw, I think, and you know, whatever the adjudicating mechanism the bylaw review committee chooses to to pursue, then we can figure out how we as a board want to respond at that time, if at all. Yeah, it seems yeah, Bill. Yeah, I'm just I'm along for the ride. I like to be consensus from our board and and really um, take the time to to understand it. I think the discussions that we have together will help me be me more informed because I think together as a group we'll we'll build a better um, product to deliver instead of just each of us delivering something. <clears throat> so I like the collaboration side of it from our board. So if it does mean that we put it on the agenda and to discuss once the revision comes through, um, that Matt, I think, I think that plays into it, right? Is it? Um, it's almost like we have an either or, and I would love that our board collaborates together and has a consensus. I think I'd rather go in that direction as well instead of five individual perspectives and viewpoints. Say I look forward to the conversation uh, because so many times I think I know what I'm talking about because I'm reading about it, but then I hear a different perspective and it makes so much sense and it just, it ties into it. So I think if we have that type of conversation, even if it takes a half hour to go over um, a couple different bylaws, it, it just, I think it would just be a better product and we'll be better prepared because We'll, we'll be more in tune. So when we do hold public hearings at some point, it will just be, um, I think we'll be able to help the public as well. M meaning help the public understand if there are any clarifications that are necessary. So it sounds like we'd be open to having some planning board discussion about some topics or language that comes up, uh, but not 
making a formal decision or or recommendation. Um, but that that would help, uh, I think, thread the needle with our collaboration and our discussion, our working on it, and then being able to give uh, some informed, informal uh, input to the bylaw review committee. Um, well, I think Bill just stated that he'd rather come at it as a board so that we do come to a consensus and, and present something back to them as from the planning board. So, um, you know, I, I'm fine with that. I'm just a little concerned of you know, how the bylaw review committee is going to take another board, you know, you know, saying we really, we really still feel strongly about this. If other boards come and have the opposing opinion or something, so mm -hmm. that's I'm I'm looking at it as them getting put in a bind of boards coming down and dictating that we're not going to approve this unless we do this. And I don't know if they're going to see that or not, but I think that right now, you know, while Attorney Bobrovsky is doing the theme meetings, I think the best thing that we can do is we can just highlight things that we think require further review by the town. Because eventually, after Attorney Bobrovsky does his first pass, he's going to hit a point where he's going to say, okay, here's your draft revision. You as the town, now it's incumbent upon you to, to provide me guidance. And I think it's just a matter of, I, and so once we get from revision one, what that feedback loop to then get provide guidance to Attorney Mabrowski, that's the process that currently hasn't really been defined. And so that's the one that, you know, the, my intent is to interrogate that at the next meeting with Attorney Mabrowski, what he's seen that's been successful. And I think through that process, depending on what, what that looks like, I think that would be when it would make sense for us to potentially look at this as a board in a more meaningful manner. But until then, while he's going through these themes, I don't think that, you know, we're going to get these things, you know, like a week before, you know, the six, five meeting, and then a week before the nine eighteen meeting. So I think that just like reviewing it live as a, as a large group is more of a brainstorming capacity with everyone at the bylaw review committee in that form of attorney Bombrowski is probably going to be the most conducive to success. And then it's just a matter of making sure that all the different items that you know require thoughtful direction get picked up. So I think it's to my mind right now we're almost in like a like a decision identification mode as opposed to adjudicating individual decisions. If that that's my read of it, but if other people feel differently, that then I'd be interested in understanding that. Mm -hmm. Um, um, yeah, I, um, I have a little bit of a, a hard time, uh, having 30 editors, um, at the bylaw review committee, uh, going over, over these memos. So, um, the, I'm not, I, I, I do wonder like, what's the, what's the most effective process for those meetings? Um, so, well, you you kind of start at the at the last bylaw review committee. There were certain people that dominated the conversation, and um, you can you can sense the frustration in uh, Attorney Bobrovsky because you know he was getting bombarded by certain viewpoints. So um, I can understand how it's tough to do that. So I think letting him roll out what he wants to say and then revealing it, you know, some tacit uh, suggestion would be good, but you know, exact wording and phrasing, you may want to hold off on that just so we can get through the process. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Um, so I... I think we'll leave it that um, once we receive the, you know, um, uh, the documents before June 5th, um, we'll individually review. Um, we won't have time to have a planning board meeting bef before then. Um, uh, we can submit our own uh, suggestions um, both before the 5th and after the 5th. Um, 
I would like to uh, keep an open item on the agenda if there are anything in particular that we would want to collaborate uh, or some concerns that you know we might have uh, af um, based on the June 5th discussion um, that um, perhaps not to uh, work on specific language, but topics again, uh, to Jim's point, um, highlighting areas for further review that, um, and if if we had, I mean, the, the good news is we are uh, viewed as the subject matter experts by the zoning bylaw review committee. Um, so they are looking for us to be giving them the the direction and the the ultimately the yes the yes no um, they're going to uh, mediate our language to make sure it fits with sort of current nomenclature and, and legal uh, review and and everything like that. Um, so um, yeah, and uh, I think for the moment we we would not unless we really felt very compelled to submit a formal letter at this point to the bylaw review committee we wouldn't do that i think we would save that for after draft one right so, okay. does that does that feel uh fair um fit you know effective um Okay, okay. Um, good. Well, um, yeah, um, it'll be useful to um, the discussion on the fifth to get uh, a better sense of timeline and, and flow and and uh, the decision making tree as well as uh, uh, the next content discussion. Um, all right. Uh, if there aren't any other comments, we can. Um, pick up item number five, which is uh, just a quick update on subdivision rules and regulations, which I am, yeah. Um, yeah, um, Bill, do you have any, um, any comments? I will, uh, before you start, say that um, with everything else that's been going on, this has uh, not uh, risen to, uh, get enough of it, uh, our attention. No, I agree. We, um, I haven't done anything to it pretty much since December. So, um, I don't know where we want to go from here with it. It's the formatting is what's left. Uh, the information's there. It's chunks of what we've revised mixed in with what exists. Um, if the bylaw review committee is reformatting anything, should we wait? Or should we just keep our revisions in there like we have them and um, submit them to be edited and updated to the online code? Well, first of all, the bylaw review committee has nothing to do with this. This is our rules and regulations. So they don't, there's no reason for them to review it. The next step is to get it in some kind of cohesive, Formatting. I know we've tried this, get it somewhere close, and then get right. it to engineering for them to start going, going through and commenting on it. Once they comment on it, then we can give it to someone in town, hopefully, who can actually, you know, format it properly or whatever we need to do right. to finish it off. Once we well, get it finished off in comments from um, DPW, mm -hmm then we can basically vote on it and implement it. That's all we need to do. Right. Yeah, I understand the bylaw review committee isn't going to, they don't have anything on it, but I was thinking more of formatting. Like how, uh, I still, it's it's a mystery to me if it's the program or how the e-code is done and all the indents and everything that just, I couldn't replicate them in Word or is it even worth it? And however it gets uploaded, then it's, Fit, it fits into the format of the software. Hey, Bill and Matt, is, is it fair at this point to say that formatting aside, the content that we have right now rep, uh, represents 
the la the latest and greatest from the last round of reviews and comments that we had as a board? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. So in that case, is there anything that I mean to Matt's point? I think before we start falling down the the formatting rabbit hole, could, you know, is there anything preventing us from pushing this over to to you know DPW and, and Bill Renault at this point? It, it can. I mean, I already went down the formatting. I mean, Matt handed it off to me to cross reference with the code, um, which I did, and to reformat it. So I went deep down that form reformatting yeah. hole. And yeah, I I would say if we just want to provide DPW and engineering with what we have. So I'm just um, looking looking in my folders for the latest. Because what I'd advocate is, you know, I, I don't know if it makes sense, but, you know, but Bill, I'd advocate that you push whatever the, the last, the latest and greatest with all the formatting that you've done to date, push it out to the balance of the this board. And then we have we have it go over to engineering so they can provide their feedback. And then let's just get let's keep the content train moving and make sure that we're in agreement on that. And then if we need to go find someone who's a word whiz or whatnot. Or an e-code whiz. We, you know, I, I feel like that's a a problem that we can we can surmount once we get past the. We want to make sure that the the content is correct. Right. I mean, I could, if it's worth it, to do a quick screen share. I can show you um, the difference. That way, it's just if or um, so. Let me back up a second. We we did receive comments. From, from CONCOM, I mean, this is going back to um, June of 22. We got comments um, from CONCOM, um, looking through proposed board, CONCOM comments. Yeah. So, yeah, I think if, yeah. So what I have up on my screen, I'm just looking at what's on the e-code. So if you look at, the procedure for subdivision uh, submission and approval of preliminary and definitive plans. And it just goes down like section four with brackets around it, A, B, C, D, E, F. Like I have it set up where it's like four and I put the brackets in it. And then I just use the formatting from Word. So it's not in brackets anymore. It just has the A with the with the parenthesis, open parenthesis as like the, the break, which is just one of the features in Word that was the closest I could get to the brackets. And what's highlighted is anything that's changed is actually in red. So the regular, like all requirements listed in this general information that was cross referenced to the section number. But then as you get down to D, we made edits to D, existing walls and fences along the boundary line and right of way used to determine street right of way lines and parcel lot lines. So that's, that's where we've made some edits. Um, so the next step would be to take what we have and send it off to DPW in att attention, Bill Renault. Is that where it should go? Yeah, yeah send we, it. Yeah, sorry, Matt. Yeah, we, we just need to, you know, write a letter saying that we're basically, we're reforming this. We've, we've gone through it. Please comment on it. And um, I know it's going to take a couple months for them to do it because this is not you know not going to be their top priority but mm -hmm. someone needs to pick a way at it and go through it so yeah all right yeah yeah i you know i think right just sending it to aaron and and bill um uh, okay yeah. let me take care of that i'll put that on my list of things to do but there's, do, do, is there a clean copy and then a red line version or what? I know I had a, 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 a you know, a copy as, as it would be presented and then one that was red line because we want, obviously want, we want them to comment on what ultimately we want it to be. Right. Um, but send the red line so they can see the, the where things have been moved to and what's been added or subtracted. So right, we have both. So yes, okay. we have the, the red line to to just to highlight more or less what is being changed, so they don't go crazy looking at each one and trying to compare what what changed. 
the same mm -hmm. as like you would cloud a revision on a set of drawings, but in this case, it's just red versus the black. Yeah, and and I am a strong advocate that we actually do some document that um, we hold on to. So that that will be uh, the benchmark because I have I know the Latin we had a book of. Um, what our rules and regulations were that I would bring to every meeting, and then it went yep. on to ECODE, and there were definitely things that ECODE changed, and then then we got into basically a pissing match. As well, this is what ECODE says, and I know they changed things on there, and we were stuck with it. So we need to have a document that is held somewhere that is the official document, and make sure that the ECODE matches that. Not that we go with whatever e code comes up with because uh, right. again, these the e code, it's a free service and they have someone toss it in there and then they they, you know, it's a free service to the town to do that. They'll, you know, sell it off to other people, but um they're not the the brainchilds of editing. You you want to understand who they have putting this stuff in there. So we just need to make sure that we can go back and verify that it does comply with our document. Okay. That's a good advice. Yeah. All right. Um, um, thank you, Bill, for uh, muddling through all of this. And thanks, uh, Matt, for having done lots of the content and to, um, and, and for being patient and, um, yeah, and yeah, we'll we will see we will see daylight at some point. Um, well, you know that now that the street naming the street <laughs> the street name change is done, <laughs> that didn't take too long. No, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, um, uh, which is a nice transition to item number six. I. Uh, items not anticipated by the chair. And so a round of applause to Bill for wow. uh, you know, a, a solid presentation, um, wowing town meeting. Yeah, thanks. Well, no, I just, seriously, I you, that, you did great. That, thanks for that moment when I turned to the moderator and said, do you want me to read the whole thing? <laughs> I just wanted to make sure. Um, that I was able to summarize. And luckily with knowing it, I was able just to summarize each section. I did have my cheat sheets in front of me, but still being able to just summarize each part definitely helped. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I, I thought it was a, a really uh, thoughtful and um, uh, effective summary. So, I mean, and it wasn't that town meeting was exhausted by that point. Um, right. So, um, no. Uh, uh, yeah, so well, well written and well presented. So, I'm, yeah, and congratulations to the, to all of us for helping to put it together. Um, so, and 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 congratulations to you, Bill, for leading it. Oh, thanks. That was fun. Yeah. Um, all right. So, um, the first of many bylaw uh, improvements that that we will be making. Um, uh, so. Um, uh, I have just I have some housekeeping stuff and some other things. Like, do other people have items uh, for discussion? Um, the uh, um, so uh, one thing that came up uh, so uh, was. Uh, was um, David Hatfield and. Uh, and CBA were, were talking about potentially putting uh, a revision in, uh, and uh, uh, something for the next town town warrant um, about um, our fees and uh, you know uh, modernizing them in the uh, in the in the in the bylaw. Uh, but Aaron has done some more work and uh, uh, talking about uh, moving uh, all the fees out of. Uh, the bylaws and and into our regulations, which sounds uh, really effective. So um, we'll check back with her on on that score and 
uh, how that that might work. So a, a potential uh, bylaw revision would be to take the fees out of the bylaw um, and and put into our our regulations, um, which makes it easier to do. Um, and Theo, and, I would note that Attorney Bombrowski mentioned that as one of the uh, concentrations of the bylaw review committee during the recodification that he had a strong recommendation that 95% of fees are omitted from the bylaw as a general yeah. good rule of practice. Right. Um, so yeah, may, maybe that that's enough so that we don't have to push that forward as a separate uh, action. Um, but to be to be discussed with uh, uh, ZBA Chair Hatfield too. Um, so, um, in the the email, uh, the planning board email account, we got uh, two letters recently. Um, one was um, a really considerate um, letter discussing uh, uh, accessible pedestrian street signals in town for uh, visually impaired people. Um, I don't I don't know a lot of the technical uh, details of that, but I will. Um, if folks have any comments, um, I'm going to forward that along um, to Aaron and and uh, and others. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Theo, I do have a comment. That's um, there's a bike ped plan that's been in review that the MAPC put together and uh, Safe Streets. We've reviewed it. It's in Aaron and um, Aaron Kokinda and Steve Mayo's hands to okay. however they're going to proceed with it. And I know Bill Renault has made many comments on it. And he has a he has a whole timeline, and not the yesterday's um, town council meeting, but the one before, he presented a whole plan where um, there are intersections and all what's going into mm -hmm. it, and they're starting with the rail uh, to trail <clears throat> intersections on Water Street and moving forward with a bunch of those. So, I think as the pedestrian safety North Ave has a plan for yeah. crossing, um, if you've noticed um, North Ave going northbound right after Betts Field um, next to the gas and light there is a safe pedestrian the ones that blink as you go through but it's um, it's not like you press it it comes on and a lot of the bulbs are already out so I'm not sure where that came from but there's um, there's definitely some effort that engineering and DPW have put into this plan so I, I don't know if yeah I would definitely forward it to Aaron so she can put it to get put it in the same folders yeah. with that. Okay. Um, we'll do. Well, thank you. Considering that most of the traffic detection on the existing lights we have in town aren't functioning and aren't being repaired, I would say adding, uh, you know, additional traffic crossing for pedestrian is pretty low on, on the list, unfortunately, because infrastructure we have is not being maintained so um, i mean it'd be nice for them to do something but uh, i know about two intersections that the traffic detection actually works the rest of them have all been taken out and it just doesn't work anymore so i know greenwood is one of them where you have to basically wait for the entire cycle uh to make a light so Okay. Um, fair, fair point. Um, thank you. All right. Um, so that's uh, uh, that was that was the first, and the second was um, another letter from residents concerned about the Nahat Street Forty B, um, which uh, um, you know has uh, you know doesn't sit with us now. Um, so um, acknowledging receipt, but no, uh, there's you know, no follow-up to that letter. Um, the, um, uh, as Aaron has said, the master plan is currently uh, being drafted by the consultant. Um, the first draft uh, they expect to submit to us um, in mid-July and we'll um, uh, start, to start to work it um, and uh, review it and uh, hold some pu public discussions around that. So um, I'll work with her um, 
uh, to get a better sense of that timing. And then um, we can have a, a, a planning board meeting looking at the calendar and, and where th how things all fit in. Um, so, um, but uh, optimistic that that um, is going to produce a very useful document that's going to support a lot of uh, all of our other uh, work and, and focus um, MBTA communities and uh, the bylaw review and, and everything else. So um, more to come. Um, and uh, as, as we know, we have um, our public hearing um, on the subdivision, the definitive subdivision plan for 197 Nahat um, continues at the June 13th meeting. Um, and uh, I wondered um, lastly, what uh, if folks had any other agenda items for the June 13th meeting? Um, so we could uh, put those together now and uh, help build our agenda for the next meeting. Um, we'll get an update from Aaron, uh, MBTA uh, communities. Um, it looks like we will have zoning bylaw review uh, follow up uh, um, or, or discussion. Um, anything else? Um, um, okay, okay. All right. Um, any other comments, uh, thoughts? Well, um, uh, that being said, um, I appreciate the discussion and um, everybody's efforts to uh, keep things uh, moving effectively. Um, and we can get a, a motion for adjournment. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Thank you, Matt. Um, second. I'll second. Uh, and all in favor, uh, Jim. Yes. Kevin. Yes. Bill. Yes. All right, Matt. Yes. And myself, yes. So, all right. Um, thanks, everybody. Thank you, Susan. And, Thank you, uh, Susan. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, we'll be talking and see you on June 5th. <laughs> all right. Appreciate it, everybody. Bye. Bye. Have a good night. You too. See you, everyone.